Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Hey, we're back with Harmonious, another episode of Bite Size Business Advice. I am 100% biased for today's episode, but it's going to be the best one ever. It's because we're talking about business operations, and that is obviously a topic near and dear to my heart. So I'm excited to dive in with our amazing guest, Adam Liette. Adam, first and foremost, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Brandon. It's an absolute pleasure. Yeah, man. So you specialize in operations. Um, I, I shared with you before we started recording that we we specialize in uh, sort of the same thing, but from a fractional COO perspective, um, mm -hmm. you work with clients and you help them really get over that that hump of of hiring their first their first couple hires and the growth yeah. hurdle that most small businesses encounter. From your perspective, though, I'm curious. Um, you know, when do people start to encounter that? first hurdle? Is it like a revenue mark? Is it an employee mark? What do you, what do you find? Honestly, the first hurdle is it's really just some of those first hires. I think a lot of people, they, they try to go the cheap route or go the easy route or go what someone told them to do without going what's necessarily the right thing for them. And so they think a VA is going to solve their problems or getting these contractors is going to solve whatever in their business and what it ends up doing is creating more bureaucracy and more management. So you go from doing all the tasks to yourself to now having to manage someone to do all the tasks for you. And now you're just trading one time for another and you're still not getting what you really want done. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm laughing because, and I'm sorry if you're listening, I'm laughing at you. Uh, I'm not, I'm laughing with you because first of all, I've been there in my own business many, many years ago. Uh, and second of all, I see that all the time where whether it's on a Facebook group or whatever, people are like, I'm looking to outsource and hire a VA and delegate and get, I'm going to get all my time back. And I'm like, oh, you poor thing. You, <laughs> you're just going to work twice as hard. <laughs> yeah. Now you're going to be managing them and you're going to wonder what the heck happened to my life. Now I'm a manager. Oh my gosh. And it's this whole new level of suck. And to be honest, like most entrepreneurs, like much love to y'all. Like you ain't built for that. Like you're not in the people leading business in that capacity. You're operating at a different level in terms of leadership and thought leadership specifically. And so we need to align you with that versus internally in the team. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think most entrepreneurs, um, we start our businesses because we love the product. We love the service or the, the process, if you will, of of delivering on that product or service and then it takes off and we experience success and we need to hire and delegate and we have no idea how to do that so right. <laughs> when you when you start working with people um where do you where do you start with them is it a mindset thing do you start with processes i'm, I'm curious how you tackle that scenario yeah the first is just getting really transparent with where your time is going um, so you ask someone, hey, what do you what task are you all doing? And they're going to give you a list. And I guarantee you that list is 75 percent fake. Um, <laughs> we're all really bad at estimating our own time. So I have this really super I, it is not fun time study. I put myself through on a quarterly basis and I make all my new clients take it. Um, what it is, is evaluate every 15 minutes of your day, 24 hours a day for two weeks and put it on this tracking sheet that I'm going to give you. We're going to plug those numbers into the calculator and we're going to show you exactly where your time is going. And it's going to shock the heck out of you when you see how much you're actually spending in parts of your business that you had no idea because you're severely underestimating the time that you're spending on stuff that you shouldn't be doing. That then opens up the conversation to what should you really be looking at offloading? What should you be delegating? And it's not just delegating like low level tasks. We often think of delegation as this like thing. I just need to get this off my plate. It's delegating where your energy is like, where, where are your energy sucks? Like, where are you not fed? 
all of us entrepreneurs, we do have those things that we're told we should offload, but actually give us momentum, give us energy, make us operate at a higher level. And so it's about just aligning where you are with where you want to be and then figuring out how to get the rest of it off your desk. Yeah, that's I, that's uh, counterintuitive to what most people say too. Um, like you said, people always tell us the things to get rid of, but realistically, if it if it lights you up and gives you energy, you can spend 30 minutes on it and it will give you the energy to go through the rest of your day. Why would you ever get yeah. rid of those things? It, it makes no sense. We're, I think what a lot of people do is they look at uh, business ownership and entrepreneurship as like this box and there's this one size fits all model for business and there's no room for flexibility. Those people I always have the biggest problems with and it sounds like you're not one of them, which is fantastic. No. It's like last week I met with a uh, social media. <clears throat> I mean, she's a thought leader in this industry, runs a eight figure business in social media le uh, coaching, <clears throat> spends one day a week still in social media yeah. doing her own post, like at the tactical level, social media uh, engagement, moderation, content creation, because that's what gives her energy. That's what makes her get up in the morning and say, hell yeah, it's my social media day. I would never dream of taking that away from her. She'd probably kill me uh, because <laughs> it's it's not it's going to be counterintuitive to her growth curve to do that. Yeah, that's that's awesome because every single other a guru coach or consultant would say immediately that's the first thing to delegate. You shouldn't be on social media. That's right. that's fantastic. So I'm curious though in this time study um yeah, I already hate you for that too. Just <laughs> I've done them myself. They're the worst, but they're all, oh, they're it so hurts. crucial. You have to, you have to do it. Um, yeah. Bite the bolt and do it. But I'm curious, do you find some commonalities in, uh, in tasks that people are doing that they shouldn't be doing? I find it's a lot of like figuring it out. If that's what I'm going to just kind of lump it into where it'll be like, yeah, I spent like an hour and a half in my project management tool. What were you doing? No, oh, just figuring something out. <laughs> like what 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 do you mean oh i was trying to make it do this thing it's like just just get just what like for real like <laughs> just get it done like it doesn't matter about nailing down the process when you're in flow like that that shit will all take care of it later itself later like put that in its proper place and just be focused on like seeing objectives and knocking them down and moving quickly through your core task list um, so it's all about speed when you're talking about tactical level work, like how fast can you knock it down with the expectation that it's not going to be perfect. And you're going to be like, that's oh, okay. I don't care. And just move on to the next step. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. And I think not to contradict what we were just talking about, but if it's, if it's taking you that long and it's not enjoyable, it probably shouldn't be something you should ever take on. Right. I mean, there's there's always the financial means like, OK, I have to do it this time, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then in the future, you look to delegate it. But I, I would agree that's a lot of like the learning time is probably what people waste their time on. On the flip side of that, though, how do you how do you get someone to wrap their head around? It doesn't have to be perfect because we all we start the business as the artist. Right. We want everything to be perfect. Like that's got to be a mindset shift, I would assume. Yeah, that's really, that gets pretty deep in the mindset and just asking them, did this make a difference? Like, is this actually contributing to your growth? Did you enjoy it? That's usually the biggest answer question. Cause I, I had a, I had a guy I was coaching the other day, spent a day and a half in a ClickUp course trying to figure out how his ClickUp. Cause he was told that he had to have ClickUp because that's the thing to have. And so he spent like literally a day and a half trying to look up. And I'm like, did you enjoy any minute of that? He's like, no, I hated it. Great. Never do that again. <laughs> like you are, you are at this, that inflection point of trying to grow. I don't care if you're managing it off a spreadsheet right now. Let's focus on growth and let's figure out that other stuff later. It's a bit like when I teach people about SOP creation, I think we get this backwards where we'll go, we'll be told, hey, create an SOP and we'll, op we'll open up a Google Doc and go, what do I do now? And I teach it the opposite way. Hey, instead of opening up a Google Doc, open ScreenFlow, hit record, 
record yourself doing the process, narrate it, narrate the journey, explain why you're doing things, explain how you like things this way, or I really like the color red because it reminds me of my dog. Like all those little ancillary little things, they feel like they don't matter, but when you capture it in an SOP video, and then give it to someone else to actually create the SOP, you're done. You created the film. That's all that you need to do as the entrepreneur. I, I can't stress the importance of, of what you just said enough so much so that actually that's how I was able to scale and get out of the day to day of my, my last company and which I ultimately sold. I, I knew I had to hire and delegate and it was, there was too much for one person to do, but I was like, I am also not going to sit here and with every single person invest hours upon hours of training that they're just going to forget in three days. So I, right. I created this master SOP list. I either screen shared or it was a physical product business. So I would walk around my smartphone and just video things. And now I'm so jealous because I sold that business before AI. Now you could just download the transcript, put it in chat GBT and say, put this in a step-by-step -step outline and you could have a, a video and a document. Yeah, exactly. It is there's no excuse if you're watching i'm calling you out if you are watching this and you don't have sop list do it now stop this recording <laughs> um, i i offloaded i used to be the like my 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 bread and butter in marketing was email marketing before i really got into operations yeah. and i ran a master humongous infusion soft list and i knew all the sequences i'd done them all from most of them from, from scratch but I knew I, I offloaded the whole thing in like six weeks. Yeah. Cause I just recorded everything I did for a couple of weeks, hired someone smart and they ran with it. Hmm. It's crazy how fast it can, it can happen if you just put your mind to it. Yeah. And then the, the best part too, is then you assign that person ownership of the process. And that's where your true freedom comes in. You say, if you, you can make changes, maybe you run them by me, maybe you don't, but update this that we call them playbooks, update this playbook. So it's accurate. Yep. So if someone else comes in, they don't even have to come see me. And ideally, I don't know how it works in a couple of months <laughs> that that yeah. would be phenomenal because it's still documented. That's, that is such a, a, a huge, huge point there. So the other thing I'm curious about is when we're, we're bringing on these first couple employees, we're documenting our processes, we're studying our time. We hate Adam a little bit because we're studying our time, but we also love him at the same time. <laughs> Um, I feel like entrepreneurs have a tendency to backslide where they, they see a little bit of growth. They see a little bit of freedom of delegation, maybe even more money. And then they're like, I think I'm going to go back to doing some of the work and answering all of my emails at the end of the day. How do you get around? Well, first of all, do you see that? And then second of all, how do you get oh, around? Yeah. See that, man, I see that <laughs> in the mirror. You know, I did it. <laughs> here's the, here's the trick feels really simple and really silly, but let me just tell you, when you bring that person on to take over that task, and this is why I really like having someone full-time, they're a little bit more powered, a little more bought in. I outright tell that person, Hey, if I try to like eat your Cheerios, I want you to yell at me. You have permission to tell me to get out of the kitchen. This is yours now. And you have authority. And when they do it the first time, celebrate it. Yeah. Say, I can't believe you just stood up to me and told me to go pound sand. <laughs> it's amazing what it does to that person that you brought on. They go, hell yeah, I can do this. And for you, it's like, oh, I just got put in my place. Oh, <laughs> man. Resist the urge to say, excuse me, who's the boss? Right. And just remember, oh, yeah, that's right. I told you. When I was thinking clearly, I told you to stand up to me and now you did. And I owe you like a hundred dollar bonus, like attach something to it, like a bonus or like, a, I don't know, like something physical, maybe like you send them something as like a, a gift for doing that. And so like, instead of yelling at them and getting upset, you go to Amazon and order them their gift. That's awesome. Yeah. Re resist the urge to assert authority. Cause that's not, yeah. that's not leadership at the end of the day. And no, then they're never going to do it again. And you'll be back where you started and without an employee, probably without an employee, because yeah. if you hired an A player, they're going to be like, screw this guy. I don't, yeah. I, I came to this because I want to like my job. If I want it to be yelled at, I'll just go back to 
down the street, <laughs> right? Yeah, whatever I was doing before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's funny. All right, so then walk me through. Um, you you have a process where you you get people ultimately to get their time back and and transition through this whatever it is a revenue hurdle, an employee hurdle. What what does that process look like as a whole, and how long does it take you to accomplish that with your clients? Really depends on where they came in at. I mean, if they're already working on scale, we we tend to be able to move a little bit quicker. Uh, once we have that second command in their seat, you know, I coaching is usually involves both of them where I'll bring both the entrepreneur and their second command on the call. We'll work through whatever issues they're working on, getting an operating system in place, figuring out their meeting cadence, really just focusing on the structure of the business and how communication is flowing up, down, and around. It has to flow in all three directions. Um, ideally, my, my best client, it took six weeks where I didn't see the entrepreneur again. He just disappeared but I was coaching the operator every week to help her continue leveling up her own leadership, fine tune everything. And then I might see the entrepreneur on Slack, like every three weeks, he would ask me a random question, but perfect world. I stopped seeing the entrepreneur and I'm working directly with the operator. Mm, that's, that's amazing. I, I don't think, I don't think we really understand how important that is because this, this oxymoron of being an entrepreneur and a business owner is like, we start this business to have freedom mm -hmm. and to chase a dream and to have time and, and money. And then we start it and we're slaves and we yeah. just like, we bang our heads against the wall and then we hire and fire and hire and fire. And it's this never ending cycle. And then we see these big businesses that like they made it right where the entrepreneur is they're They're in Cabo. I don't even know where Cabo is, but it's somewhere nice. I think. And, and we're like, nice. how yeah. are they doing that? And you help people through this process to get past that hurdle, which, I, as you know, I'm sure the small business failure rates are astronomical. It doesn't have to be that way. I absolutely love that this is your specialty. I told you I was biased when we started this episode. So <laughs> and I, I mean, will say, I mean, big picture, yes, small business failure rates are what they are. But I, I've, I'm starting to form this idea in my head of why. And I think part of it is because we lose some of the passion when we're so into the business. We're like, I can't do this anymore. We get burnout. And so did the business really fail or did we fail to adapt to what the business needed from us? Big picture, when you look at a team that's growing, a growing enterprise, we need two different types of leadership. We need inspirational, motivational leadership to set the vision, set the goals, and move the team forward to it to inspire the team. That inspiration only lasts so long, then you need to have emotional leadership. That's what carries them through everything to get there. Those have to be two different people. Mm -hmm. And when you can separate that, entrepreneur stays in visionary leadership, operator is emotional leadership. Now you have the structure and support that your team needs to accomplish the big task and the big projects. Mm, I agree a thousand percent. Could not have said it better myself, so I won't. But I will say you have uh, an awesome offer for uh, the listeners and subscribers for this show. First of all, thank you for listening. We love having you here. We do this for you. Um, I put the website on the screen, but tell me a little bit about what you have for people if they want to take that next step and see if um, you're, what you do is maybe right for them and the scaling of their business. Yeah, so it's it's for my coaching program. It's a uh, Let's jump on a free call see where you realistically are right now. Uh, so it's a completely free consultation. Um, I, I can't help myself. I like to give out tips, tricks, even when you're not paying yet. So you're going to get that from me. Um, I will say that I, because it's one-to-one -one relationship, I work with an extraordinarily limited number of people. Uh, so right now I'm capped at 20 for the year. I need to update that particular landing page right there because I'm down to 17 that I'm going to work with this year. Um, so yeah, let's jump on a call. See if this is the right fit for you. That's awesome. I listen, I was in this position in my last business and what got me over that hump was pretty much something exactly like this. It was going external, figuring out, I knew I had to be the visionary and I knew I had to guide the team and move the business forward, but the day to day just totally bogged me down. I wanted nothing to do with the numbers and the metrics and all this other stuff that is so crucial and important to running your business. I, I'll tell you what, I, I already told you it was the SOPs and the actual day-to-day -day management of the business. 
that enabled me in a very short period of time to rapidly scale that business and ultimately exit in less than three years. So Love take it. this offer on the screen, go talk to Adam and Adam's in line with everything. I believe here, he, he gives first, just like we do. Um, and so go at least pick his brain and, and see if it's not something that you can't get some valuable insights from, um, and maybe become a client and scale your business, get your time freedom back. Adam, thank you so much for being here. This was absolutely fantastic. Best episode of the year. I'm calling it here. It's early in the year, but we're doing it. <laughs> Boom. I appreciate awesome. it. And for you listening, subscribing, make sure you hit that subscribe button and comment below. Hit the like button. We want to know your thoughts. Either way, we'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch for more bite-sized business advice. See you there.